Yo, 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 what's going on, world? It's your boy Najee from Cigar Talk. And today I got a very special guest, man. Yo, listen, all my fight fans, y'all know who this is. And if you don't, you need to be tapped in. My man, Richardson Hitchens, what's going on, brother? Thank you for having me, brother. Man, yo, it's, it's good to see you, man. Yes. I like, you know, I've been, I've been seeing you for images. Images. Yeah, facts. A long time now. Yeah. Word. Um, you just came off your, your last fight, Yomar Alamo, I think his name was. Yes, Yomar Alamo. Um, stopped him in eight. Yeah, stopping it up. How you feel? How you how you felt in there? Uh, I think I think it, it was a uh, I think it was a, a statement win just to show like I'm on a whole different level because I, I made a guy look like like that like he wasn't supposed to be in there with me and you got yeah. he never been stopped before he was 20 and one and his only losses was in a split decision versus a guy that's ranked number two for the world title shot and I've been going through a lot of endeavors outside of the ring as far as contract problems not being in the ring so for somebody. Like me with little little experience of going to ring, just take care of somebody like that just says a lot about my skill set. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it looked pretty easy. I mean, you make it look easy. I don't know if it's easy in there. You make it look easy. Uh, one of the things everybody always say about your fight style, your jab. Like niggas yeah. always talk. You got one of the best jabs. They say. We feel like like you always had that. Like your jab always kind of been like that, or you feel like it developed through the years. I think uh, I d it definitely developed more. Like you know, through just like training and. You know, just keep keeping at it, staying consistent. But I think it was just something I'm blessed with. Just, just the my jab is really about the the timing and the calculations mm. when I throw it. It's just not I don't just throw it. So yeah. I think that's what kind of makes it so different. Yeah, because it's different. It's different type of jabs. Like we breaking down, you got like the range finder type. You got the power jab. Right, like, right. I feel like you got all of them in your arsenal. Yeah, bro. that's that's the most important punch. I mean, a jab could take you a right a right hand could take you around the block, but a jab would take you around the world. So mm, that's a fact. So tell me, I mean, you you mentioned a lot of the stuff you was going on outside the ring, like contract problems. I know you were signed to Mayweather Promotions, mm -hmm. um, and just coming, you know, I'm from the towns, like you from. We seeing you with Floyd. I'm like, oh shit, like you know, it's looking lit. Um, nah, yeah. How was that experience? Obviously, it, it I guess it didn't end up how you anticipated. But tell me about the experience of being signed to Mayweather. I think uh, being signed to Floyd, it was it was a great experience because you know that's like somebody I looked up to from a young kid, and I was kind of like. I always felt like I had the same talent he had, but I just always wanted to prove myself to him. I wanted to, I really signed him to get next to him and like learn, get knowledge. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I, it really wasn't about the money, but obviously when I first when I first was a young kid, he put some money in front of me, and I thought that was a lot of money, and I thought that I was gonna get moved like Javante was obviously. Yeah. So uh, when we was in a contract, I would see you know guys like Javante getting a certain like, and I'm like I'm just as talented as this type of guy, so why I'm not getting this um same type of shine, yeah. but when you learn the business and you start getting more, you know, smart about just how to move, you see that you you can't go, your route ain't the same as everybody's route. So I had to go somewhere that it was better opportunities for me and just get a different type of exposure. So now I feel yeah. like I'm in better hands. I got a manager, so can't nobody just come talk straight to me. They got to talk to somebody else. And <laughs> yeah, right. My money is You're getting- Sending them the niggas down. Right. Yeah. My, <laughs> my, my money is getting like- Monitor before it's kind of like somebody telling me you fighting this day, you getting paid this much. It's like, all right, like it looked like a lot of money to me now, but now I got somebody that's like, nah, we ain't fighting for that, we fighting for this. So, right, I mean, I feel like I'm in better hands now. Yeah, I feel that. I mean, so when you say, like, just with the Floyd situation, it was like, you know, you feel like you wasn't being moved, kind of like how Tank and them was being moved. Why you think that was? Like, when you try to sit in your, your head and rationalize it, like, damn, like I see this going on, what do you think was the reason it wasn't happening? I like think that? it's different. Tank. When he first when he first um, signed to Floyd, he was one of the fighters that was he was one of the young talents that Floyd never really had a fight like that. So Floyd gave him the world. Him and Tank had a lot of behind the scene issues and a lot of damage in their relationship. So Floyd kind of like I think he kind of just was like, nah, any other young fighter like like it is what it is. Then you got things like Tank being a knockout artist. I'm not a yeah. knockout artist. I'm a, I'm a pure boxer. Mm -hmm. So it's easy for Tank to sell. I'm a I'm a person that have real yeah. skills. So right. I think Mayor Promotions really couldn't move me. As far as like that to, to brand me, because you know it's still even though it's mayor promotion, we still fight on Showtime, which is Al Heyman. Yeah, that's so Al right. Heyman's in control, control of a lot of things going on. So right. I feel like um, it was just like a lot of things on the business side. But like I said, now was a whole different story. Yeah, that's a fact. And things are looking brighter. That's a fact. Um, we definitely gonna get into the you know to the new situation with Matchroom and Eddie Hearn. Um, it's funny because you and Javante is cool. Like I see y'all niggas like y'all done spar before. Y'all interact, and it seems like you know that's the homie. Um, 
what advice do you feel like or anything that you kind of pick up from, you know, him, um, just knowing him and seeing kind of his route? Like, what do you get from him? Just, I feel like being around him as far as like in the, in the ring, just, I think talent, talent and hard work always prevail. I see him, I see him do some nut shit, some wild shit. Like, like in the gym? Like, no, just outside, like oh, okay, just okay. do some wild shit and, yeah. and when it's like... He go in the ring and it's like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. right? like he was just doing this. How did he perform like this? So I think that talent, like his talent, really got him to it. It's his talent, his heart, like his heart mm. as a as a fighter. Yeah. So just picking that up and just little things in the ring, like being around him, seeing seeing how he how he's a thinker in the ring, picking up certain things, listening to him, it definitely elevated my game. So I mean, we learned. I feel like we both learned off each other, but he's you know he he's seen certain things that I haven't seen yet. So yeah. it, it's a it, it's a great uh. It's a great thing, you know, to be able to have somebody like that by yourself. What, what was it like in sparring? Obviously, you ain't you can't take too much out of sparring because sparring is sparring, like it's different than going in. But you fight a tank, these are two top niggas was like, you know, going nah, against each other. When I sparred tank, I fucked them up. That shit was easy work. Now <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh what? We talking? We nah. talking talk. Nah, let me stop. Now nah, yeah. when we sparred, we was talking, it was like uh, real competitive. Like yeah. real competitive. Um just two young talents, just, you know. Obviously, it's like two two yeah. nice niggas in the ring just right. going at it. You feel me? Right. But it's like it's competitive and it's it's, it's a personal thing there because it's like ah, right, you think you him, but he probably in his mindset. I'm gonna really show you I'm him, and I'm thinking in my head like I'm gonna show you I'm him, I'm him too. So right. it's like it's real competitive. Like that's like top of the line work. We've been working. I think I got him ready. Me and Shakur got him ready for his first world title fight, and after that he was kind of became like sold. Like all right, yeah. like all right, these two youngins like. They gonna be around boxing for a long time, so you right. know. Right. Yeah, I definitely see him supporting you. Um, now you you know you you with Matchroom and Eddie Hearn. That's the new promoter I saw. Um, how'd I feel, Eddie? Because I really I feel like Eddie started really getting pop in the last few years, like yeah. coming in with the zone or whatever. Um, how was that? Like just kind of your interaction with him. Um, it's it's cool. Like it's, it's really on my manager. My manager setting up everything. Me and Eddie don't really have a relationship. I don't. I never really talked to him. We we sit down actually next week and you know get introduced and we talk about future plans. Yeah. But it's like I know I'm that guy. Like I know like I'm better than all these 140s. Like yeah. It's just like a matter of just showing. Like I'm a like I'm. It's like it's like just showing. Right. Like right. last week, people was like, oh my god, this is he performed this way. It's like I do this every this day in the gym. Regular. Like this, this is regular. Like yeah. he'll tell you like I go to the gym after a crazy week of partying and just. Smash dudes rounds and rounds, so it's like this, this shit. This is something I love, so it's fun to me. So yeah. it's like it's just like showing y'all like this is my shit. Like when it right. comes to boxing, this is what I do. You yeah, know, that's a fact. Um, the press conference was ill, b. I ain't gonna hold you. You and Montana niggas want to see that, b. I'm yeah. not gonna hold you because so obviously you you was like I said you fought Alamo, so I feel like they was trying to put y'all, but you and Montana been having this thing like. Just, yeah. It feel like competitive. I don't know. Like, nah, what is it's it? not competitive. I like, think you don't more, fuck with him for I think real. I really or? don't. I really don't fuck him because it's like we 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 talking boxing. I'm kind of, obviously I could have told um, Matthew like I'm not fighting in Ohio because I already know like how he coming. He coming outside of boxing. Mm -hmm. So he DM me on some oh you talking that tough shit now you in my city. Don't be on no police shit. Don't with such and such like yeah, yeah, niggas that. gonna have niggas gonna strip you such and such whatever. So I'm like I'm laughing. Whatever. I get to the city. His and he, he kind of come up to me in my ear like what's 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 that what you talking so I'm like bro like I'm from where you whatever you think you from I'm from that too you know what I'm saying so mm -hmm. it's like you're not about to come in my ear and tell me that so we kind of got into it a little bit. This and, before the press conference. No, this is at the press conference. Oh okay. But it was like behind like before the cameras came on so yeah. we we cut we got into it and it's just animosity from from years so I feel like we got to fight and I and that's all it is like yeah we just had to make it happen. Nah for sure I mean because like obviously I like hearing young niggas talking shit and going at it but like. Nobody don't want to see no street shit. Y'all are professional fighters. Like, let's make some money and right. <laughs> fight. But he can't mean? fuck with me in the ring. He know that. He know that. He, he people around probably tell him like he. Yeah. People know I'm like what, what it was coming when we going in the ring. So you got to take it to some street shit. I'm not. I'm not. I'm way past. Like I ain't no street nigga. I'm a boxer. Right. You feel me? Right. I ain't. I ain't never try to be a street nigga. I'm a, a New York hood kid. I'm from the hood. Yeah. And now I'm making money legitly. I'm making real money. So. He talking all this hush shit. He in the press conference time. He toting and all type of shit. I don't want to hear that. I, like I'll smack you and we go in the ring and fight. Like, right. like what you want to do? He talking about we can fight outside the ring, fight outside the ring and in the ring. It don't matter. <laughs> Either or. So you think when you looking at his style? Because he fought the Australian guy. I forget his name now. Um, he fought the Australian dude. And um, the beginning, I feel like he had it. Then the Australian dude started really kind of coming on a bit. Like 
pressure style. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know what it what it is. I I, t- I knew Montana love. He, he's chinny, and that uh-huh. kid is relentless. He keep coming. Yeah, he's chinny, and he was he, Montana probably it probably was an even fight, but I think that. Later on down the line, he would have came on to Montana because mm. my it's a certain it's just certain things in the ring. You 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 just know how a, a guy's comfortable. Montana's a shorter guy. He's comfortably he's comfortable counter punching. Yeah, the guy kind of took that space away. Once he got close to Montana, he really didn't know what to do. So that's when the guy was c- kind of coming on. I, I seen later in the fight, Montana probably would have been stopped because he'd been hurt already a few times in the fight. So. Yeah, he got dropped once I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the DQ, obviously, he got disqualified. Do you feel like, was that a legit, like being unbiased, was that a legit, like should it have been stopped or was it like- nah, I, I think continue. he would probably got two points taken away. Yeah. And I think that, I don't think that, I, I know as a fighter, when a man is trying to take your head off, you're going to do whatever it takes to protect yourself. So it's probably a move out of emotion. I don't think that he did that like so- Like purposely he, to get hurt. Yeah, to not get stopped. Because yeah. he was like, oh, he was trying to get, he was not trying to get stopped. I think yeah. he just was like- he letting him know like he in a fight. It is what it is, but I don't think they should have stopped it. They probably should have took two points away from him. Yeah. But you know. Nah, for sure. Um, so what do you see when that fight? Obviously, you think you're gonna win, but when you're looking at you versus Montana Love, like wh- how does that play out in your head? I don't know. I just know I'm smarter than him. His boxing is called hit and don't get hit, and, and like I said, I, I've been doing this for what, four or five years now, and I not, you, you hit my record 15 and 0, you be like, okay, like he's still in the be, beginning, or he didn't really fight that much competition, but I'm not just a normal 15 0, I've already been fighting former world champions at 10, 11 and 0, at 21 years old, I've been fight, fighting top competition, so i never been dropped, I never had a draw, and I never had a close fight, yeah. so obviously he's been dropped, he's been in draws, he's been in close fights, and now he obviously took a loss. Yeah. So. It's, it's just, you know, it's Levels, showing, yeah, it's yeah. showing, and, and, it's, and you look at his competition, you look at my competition. So, I mean. Right. Th- okay. Now, I like that, um, like I said, I met you in the amateur circuit, you know, you was doing your thing back then. And I fucked with you because of that, because yeah. you believed in me from day one. For facts. real. Yeah. That's a fact. <laughs> we, uh, remember, I was I was interned for Rock Nation Sports yeah. at the time, so we was trying to put some shit yeah, together. Yeah, you was like, nah, he's one of them, y'all got to yeah. get him type yeah. shit. Yeah, like, nah, you was that. killing in the amateurs for sure. Um, I think another person, it was you... Shakur and Boots, I feel like with the, the people I seen really getting it. And obviously, yeah. you know, Shakur, my little man, had him on the show too. Um, y'all cool, y'all real tight, spar a lot. Yeah. Um, what you feel like you you pick up from him and just, you know, in the ring and out the ring? Smart fighter, very smart, very dedicated to, to the craft of boxing. And I think his dedication comes so easy because he love it. He really loves boxing. Like, I never met somebody that loved some us uh, like boxing the way he loves it. Like it's like sick. Like it's sick the way he. I mean, if he on the phone, all he want to talk about is boxing. Like when I flew in Houston, like, like I just partied all night. I ain't sleep or nothing. I came in into Houston. He came pick me up in the uh, in the airport and straight from the airport. He take me straight to the boxing gym to spar, and I'm like, what the fuck, bro? I just landed, <laughs> like, I'm gonna take me to get set and eat, like. Right. But he's like so in love with the sport, where it's like he just, you know, that's what son that I that rubbed off, like you know, like to me. Yeah. And I think our relationship is based off of boxing, cause it's like I love it and he love it, so it's like it brings us closer. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you like I said, you, you know, like you said, you 15 and 0, um, but you're not a normal 15 and 0. You've been fighting a lot of these guys. In sparring, man, who do you feel like, what was the toughest sparring match? Like, if you could think, like, one that you was like, damn, like, I go lie, that was one of them ones. Like, what was the, what's the first one that come to your Call, head? Carlos Adamas. I don't know if you know who that is. Nah, it's not he, familiar, he, though. He's, he's fight 154, uh, 160, he's up for Charlo Belt. Oh, the, he's Cuban? The Cuban he, dude? No, Dominican. Dominican? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, yep. yeah I remember sparring him, and I was 19, and it was like, oh, oh, he's, he was like about the same record as mine, 15, 16, you know, and they were saying that um, he's like ranked number something for the world, for the belt, and I remember Sosa was like, bring him to the gym, like, I got a young boy that's ready for him, so he's like, they said he was fighting one weight classes heavier than me, but he came in the gym, I'm 19, I'm like two weeks away from fighting, so I'm probably like 150 something, yeah. coming to the gym, I'm looking like, he looked like 180, right. but I remember just... He just was just so strong. I'm like, oh, I'm in some shit like right, right. now. Like, hold on, when you say strong, you mean like his punches were strong or no, was like him his punches, just... like the shit he's throwing at me is like, oh, this shit is different. But right. like that's why I said like I've been boxing my. I, this is like as a young kid, you kind of don't really know like what you're capable of because it's like when I think about it, I've been boxing for my whole life, and I've done seen guys drop, hurt, all type of shit. I've been there with some punches, tank, yeah. Carlos Adams. He's hit me with some shit, and I. And I'm not that I'm bragging like I'm getting hit, but it's like it shows me that I could dish it and I and can take, take it. it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But that was one of the moments where I 
think back of my moment, think back of my experience in boxing, like, I right, like I know I could take it. It's not about just dishing it, but I've been I wasn't able to kill him. He's yeah. showing some shit in yeah, there. You ain't put me down. I, I seen another fighter in the gym that you know get in the ring with him, two rounds, it was stopped. And I'm like, damn, I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, yeah, like damn. Who, who, come on, nah, I man. can't what do that. I got to take out the scenes. I can't do that. You right. You know, niggas would have known that, but yeah, I feel you. I feel you. Nah, for sure. Um, I think one of the. Tell me about like you know. So you coming up? You did the Olympics. You represented Haiti. Um, yeah, that was dope. Tell me about that. Like putting on for the country. Like you represent Haiti in boxing. Um. It was like saying always like in the in the plans. Like once the Olympics was coming out, like if, if the USA don't work out. You're gonna try to represent Haiti and making it to the U.S. Olympic trials alone is already something big because like that's that year was so much talent. You had yeah. me, Boots, Gary Russell, yep. and guys that you don't even know of. Like everybody I was in that in the in the Olympic trials at that weight class is probably two guys is not established as professionals, but guys are still making noise. Like you know at the top level yeah. as a professional that was in that trial. So that was alone an accomplishment, but. When people were here, like, oh, you went to Haiti Olympics, they think like Haiti just said, all right, come, you fighting into Olympics. Like, hey, hey. that that was not it. Like, I had to go to Russia. I had to fight seven different countries. I had to medal and get uh, get ranked in the world. I had to fight Russia. I had to beat Korea. I had to beat Brazil. I had to beat, um, I had to fight England. I had to fight hey. seven days in a row back to back to get to even get a spot in the Olympics. So it right. wasn't like I just went and fought for Haiti. So it was yeah. like a great accomplishment. That showed me like. I belong on that world level because, mind you, I didn't. I never fought international. Guys on the U.S. team already done fought pre-tournaments against other countries. I never yeah. fought no other country. So finding them styles and outboxing these guys, it was kind of showing me like, all right, like you super talented. Like I promise you, bro. Like I believe in my talent. Yeah. Now that I know mm -hmm. how, like it's like a hundred percent. I already feel like I could go just as far as Floyd. Like it's just on me. Like as far as focus. Yeah. Um, you fought Gary Russell. That was to in the first. Was that the round you fought Gary Russell? Yeah, Gary Russell, the first round um, Olympics. Yeah. Um, obviously, he got the better of that one. What did you learn from that? Like, I mean, you gotta think about it. It's when different. I talk, though, amateurs too, though. Amateurs are different. No excuses, but you still gotta think about it. Like logically, when I was talking about talent, this is somebody that came from a boxing family. Yeah. I'm somebody that was started boxing at 12, 13. So I went to Olympics only five, six years of boxing. We talking about the Olympics. Mm -hmm. Five, six years. You got guys at your court that was boxing for 12 years. Right. Going into Olympics, all that experience. You got somebody like me, only six years of boxing, and I go right into Olympics from right. 13 to 18. Right. So it's kind of, yeah. with no the experience international factor. experience, yeah. it was like kind of like, all right, you really got to be really good to even make it that far. So it was kind of like now polishing me up, you know? Yeah. So that's all I really learned from that experience. It's like, you, you, you talented, you're going to go places. So just to keep working and your time will come. So what was the point from when you was, uh, you was out the Olympics, and then you signed to Mayweather Promotions. You signed to Floyd. What what was that like when when you first met Floyd and realized like damn this this whole shit about to start up? What what was that like for you? Nah, it was just like damn I'm pro now. Like it's just kind of different. Like I'm I'm the first time I made my first check. I was in bait. <laughs> I was like oh shit I'm making money. I went to the bait store. Yeah, I went to the bait. Store. <laughs> yeah, I was on the bait hoodie. Yeah. So I went to the bait store with Erickson Lubin. Okay, yeah. And I was I bought like a eight hundred dollar hoodie and I'm like yo I right, like damn I'm lit like I'm I'm like I'm signing Floyd like Floyd hitting me calling my phone like wiring me money like I'm just like like I'm finding the Barclays the whole city popping out like every time I'm fighting it's like an event like it's not yeah. like amateurs but it's like fifty right, came out your first fight fifty came out with me in my first fight so it was like it's dope but like now it's kind of like all right like I could see it's not even about I know my life is changing but I want to change the people around me life because yeah. now it's like. You know, like it's kind of different now. Yeah. Like mentally, things are changing, so it's just it's just a process. Yeah. So when when you like your what's the most memorable moment that you got with Floyd? Like out of your whole time, kind of being there, being around the nigga, talking to him. I never forget this moment. Uh it was me. It was Javante. It was uh, Xavier Martinez. It was so many um so many talented guys in the gym, and I remember we us Javante sparred, and I was the last person to spar. But I know Floyd signed me off like he hearsay. He never really seen me. Mm. He just Leonard was kind of like the scouter. Right. So I always knew like he always knew I could fight. But I remember it was during the pandemic and he watched me spar. He like he was sitting down. I remember Javante. He was up on the apron. Javante is sparring. When Javante started sparring, he got down and sat down. Like, all right, oh these guys. Like, right. Right. So I'm like, all right, cool. I can get in the ring. He could peep me. Like he sees some boxing going. He peep me from afar. He get closer. But then. 
I could see him like he get close, he get on the apron. Now he really watching. Yeah. So I leave, we whatever. Boom, we finish smart, get out. His security like, yeah, I'm driving away. They call Lenny like, yeah, yeah, Floyd calling. I'm calling Richardson. Floyd runs to the car real quick. He like, you want me to lie to you? You want me to tell you the truth? I'm like, tell me the truth. He said, you the best boxer in that gym. I said, what? Like Lenny, like you lying. He like, he tell Lenny like, you think I would come over here to lie to another man just to lie to, to another man? Right. So I'm like, oh, like whatever, it sound good, da da da. Like I felt good at the moment. Yeah. Then he called me like late at night, like five in the morning on Facetime. He's like, just like preaching me like on how good I am. Like yo, like you could tell he genuinely felt like it was greatness in front of him. Like this kid right. is it. Like he's like, not he's no regular person. Yeah. Like he's seen it. So from then, it was like I knew I was it, but that stamped it. Like, mm. like I know, like can't nobody tell me. Like, Gave you the like it like. was like you could take whatever, but I know like what I am. Like that yeah. was it, cause it was like. He re- like the way he spoke to me is like he really was trying to let me know like you're him like yeah. when it comes to boxing like you're it like I've been doing this my whole life like right. I know what I just like what I'm seeing type shit. And I remember he like he flew me back like he flew me back. He got me a spot. He got me a crib out there. He flew me back. Vegas? Like, he, Vegas? Yeah, during the pandemic he flew me back. I was staying living out there for a little while with him. He was and then I knew he was serious because every time he came to the gym, like he'll call me. We'll go to his house and sit down, watch boxing, and then he'll like um. He'll like go come to the gym and he's hands on like as my trainer like every day like he's oh, there. Like telling right? you what, what he doing pad work and shit. Pad work, everything Man. on the bag, watching, do this, do that. Boom! I'm like, yeah, like all right, like he's not gonna take his time out just for anybody. Yeah. So I was like, one of the crazy experience like about that whole. That was the best experience about the money, anything. Yeah. That was the best experience. Right. Nah, that's crazy. Um, I I want to talk a little, you know, just some some boxing shit going on. Um, they just announced Tank versus Ryan Garcia is supposed to be happening next year. Signed, delivered. Um, you been in the ring with Ryan before? Yeah, I spot Ryan. What you think? I, I spot Ryan one probably like what there is like 2017, 2018. We only did like three rounds. Like I don't know. He came to the gym. He was like he only went three rounds. We ain't. Even, we was just literally like just looking at each other the whole time. It was like a chess match. It was. Yeah. It was about nothing. Like yeah. we were just talking shit. Like it wasn't. It wasn't. It ain't get. It so ain't like, get them deep like, rounds. Yeah. Like I wanted it to go like six, eight, but we only did like. Three rounds filling each other out, so yeah. it's not much I could tell you about him. Um, well, since you've been in the ring with both guys, like, how do you see that fight going? I mean, like I said, I really can't. I don't really don't remember. Like, no, I can't even tell how long Ryan Arms is. Like, I don't yeah. remember the sparring. Right, but just watching him, just like watching, watching him. him. Like, if you see both of them, Tank and Ryan, like, who you think got the edge in that fight? I mean, Ryan is chinny. And Ryan go down, but it's like. Are you Ryan, saying that just from the Luke Campbell shit, or? Yeah, from the Luke Campbell okay. shit. I'm right. saying like he's chinny because Luke Campbell really not known for putting people down. It's like, how are you? Like you get hit by him, you get hit by Tank, you going to sleep. Right. So. Right. But it's like if Tank got hit by him, he's going to sleep. Because Ryan got one. Of, yeah. He got left hook though on him. So like you never really know, but I. But I'm just saying like from like just like knowing like, if I had like just knowing like what I've. I know what Tank could do out in the gym. Like, yeah. if, I know Tank is it. Like, he's really it. So yeah. it's like, I don't look at Ryan like one of them tasks. It's like, oh, like you know, he he got speed, he got power, but Tank is just something completely different. So that's gonna be a hard task for him to get it done. I don't think that would be like as much of a hard task for Tank to get it done because oh, it's, it's harder for Ryan. To, yeah, like I'll be yeah. like saying that was surprising. Like, yo, you beat Tank. Like, oh shit. Like, right. I don't see that. Like, you know, like, yeah, you, that's, come on, you think that's that tough. Head, like, if, he, if Tank tough. beat him, you gonna be like, ah, it's regular Tank. Yeah, if he beat Tank's Tank, Tank's supposed that's to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah Tank's so supposed to be. So it's kind of for me. Yeah, nah, for sure. Um, nah, I like that. If you, if you, you be thinking about like pound for pound and shit, does that matter to you? Yeah, I wanna be. I wanna. I wanna be number one pound for pound. I want the glory. I want everything that come with boxing. I'm, I wanna. I wanna be. The, uh, a, a, like a legend, when, like I don't want to be them guys that oh, like he used to be nice back in the day. Young yeah. boy from Brooklyn, like yeah, right. sign the Ford and all that. He probably won a title and shit, but he was nice. Like now, I want to be like whoa, like I want to be like Richardson Hitchens when I yeah. grow up type of. Right. So I'm in it for that. Nah, for sure. Um, who's on your like pound for pound? Like who's the fighters that you feel like right now like best in the world type shit? Best in the world, I would give it to um, I say Terrence Crawford. I say. Um, uh, Canelo, I'll say Shakur Stevenson. Yeah. I'll say um, I don't know, like those that, that like that I'm watching. You got Bivol in there, but Vol, I mean, he's good. Like he's he's good. I he's gotta good. fuck with him. Look. Like, I ain't gonna hold you. I think he's right. What was his last one? He fought um the last one he just fought. Uh, well, that was just like two weeks ago. Bivol just fought. Um, I'm losing it. I'm trying to remember who he just fought. 
Oh, he uh, put that um, Z- Z- Ramirez, 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 yeah. Ramirez. It's a lot, but as you understand, there's a lot of talent in boxing that's like, that's like people that's gonna do great things that I know like they're gonna be around. Like, I just can't. I'm just talking for right now because I really feel like you got guys like Boots that's gonna do great things in boxing. Yeah. You got guys like Devin Haney that's already doing right. tremendous things. I it's think mean right now, like, but I'm saying like right now as far like pound, like Shakur, like he's not, he ain't doing nothing yet, but he's this shit. But I'm saying like he ain't really like. For me to be like, he's the best fighter in the world, but I just know, like, from like seeing it, like, yeah. I feel like you put certain people in front of certain people, they're not gonna be able to deal with shit like that. Like, you put, I feel like you put like a guy like Boots in front of a lot of welterweights, he's gonna demolish them. Like, you know what sure. I'm saying? For just sure. like Virgil Ortiz, you put him a lot in front of a lot of welterweights. He's gonna demolish them. Yeah. But they ain't do nothing yet, so we can't really speak on it. Right. It's kind of like, all right. No, I see what you mean, because yeah. it being early. Um, you mentioned Terrence Crawford. Obviously, the boxing world been wanting to see the fucking Crawford Spence. Like, everybody want that. Didn't happen. Um, you as a boxer, like, when you see that, like, people can't put fights together that's big like that. What you think? Why is it like that? There's a business. I learned, I learned that just even, like, when people say, why you not fighting? Why not fighting? It's a business. Like, it's about all type of shit. Like, it's, the business part about it is the, the most frustrating part. And the crazy thing, the people behind the scenes, they don't give a fuck, like, we could all scream, like, oh, why Richardson not fighting? Why Crawford and Earl? They don't care. Like, it's like, all right. It's like a business. It's really right. a real business. This shit right. is, like, crazy to me. I never really understood it till, like, it was happening to me. Like, oh, like, you see time going by. Like, all right, it's like, same thing with my career. Like, you see time going by. It's like, I'm getting older. It's like, I'm like, why, why I'm not fighting? And my career is getting wasted. I got to make a move. Just like same thing with Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford. Time is being wasted again getting older. Yeah. Why is nobody pulling that trigger? Why nobody got that power to really make the fight happen? Right. But they really, it's like they don't care. It's like a business. But if it don't make sense in the business side, it ain't going to happen. You think fighters that big can make some shit shake, right? Because it's like everybody's staying to make however many millions of dollars or whatever. Right. Is it like you think working with opposite promotional companies make it like crazy? Yeah, it's like because you know everybody feel like they bring sense to the table. Just like with Pacquiao and Floyd. Pacquiao felt like he brought a lot to the table, and Floyd felt like he brought the world to the table. So it's like, yeah. till anybody, till it, anybody seen eye to eye, it was not gonna happen. You seen how long it took for the Floyd and Pacquiao fight to happen? Yeah, so it's kind of like with Terrence. Terrence is gonna stand on what he feel his value is, and Errol Spence gonna stand on what he feel his value is. So we might never see that. <laughs> <laughs> who you give? Who you give the edge to in that fight? I uh, I think it's a great fight. Uh, I think it's a great fight. I think that uh, I'm just a boxing fan that night. Yeah. Okay, I feel that. Um, man, well, I definitely thank you for pulling up, bro. Uh, really dope episode. I just want to get, you know, this, this, you know, we, we do a lot of rap shit here, too, you know what I mean? So give me, uh, what you been listening to? What kind of... Lil what Baby running listen? the game right now. Lil Baby album, hard. Yeah, Lil Baby yeah. running the game. I yeah. think, um, yeah, I ain't gonna lie, just, right now, all I'm hearing is, like, like, Drake, he's, like, different. So I ain't gonna bring Drake. Like, when I think of rapping right now, Lil Baby is, like, he's, Lil he's Baby it. got it. Yeah, he's it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um... What else in your playlist? Other shit you fuck with? I fuck with Uzi. I fuck with Future. You like that the little new stuff? Just want to rock? Yeah, yeah, you like yeah. That? I'm, I'm happy he got. I'm happy he got another hit because he he's like he needed he, one, right? Yeah, he just was yeah. just outside, just chilling. I'm like, yeah. why he not like making music? But like, I like him. I like um. There's an there's another uh, rapper in Florida. I think his name is Hot Boy. Oh, Hot Boy, yeah. Yeah, dress with the high yeah. dress. Yeah, yeah. I'm feeling him heavy too. Like he's dope. Yeah. There's, a, there's a lot of talent right now when it comes to music. So yeah, you know, I just can't wait to wait to hear some new. Music. Nah, for sure. Uh, so tell me when the next fight, when your next fight, you said they got you? Um, I, I, can't, I don't want to drop the fight day. I told you it. Yeah. But um, it's definitely, it's that we definitely bringing it close to home. Okay. So, so it's going to be close and it's going to be in the, uh, probably in the next two, three months. So we're going to st- start getting ready for that like real soon. Yeah. Uh, I love that, man. Dope episode of Cigar Talk. Actually, one more question. For young niggas that's uh, coming up in the fight game, Want to make the best moves? What what kind of advice would you give them? Business or just outside of business? Both. Business, I think uh, get somebody like get a manager. Definitely get a manager, somebody that you trust that's gonna that has a great reputation of doing good things, a lot of great things for other fighters, and so that you know they kind of got a resume. You could trust them. And outside of uh, uh, boxing, just believing in your talent, believing whatever talent you have, and really loving it. Like if I feel like I feel, I look at life like this. When the FBI want to crack a case, they're going to do whatever it takes to get that case done. They're going to go undercover. They're going to do illegal shit. They're going to, they goal is to get that done. If yeah. somebody have that mindset as far as whatever they chasing, however way they got to figure it out, they're going to try to get it done. So I feel like that's the, one of the main recipes to success, staying consistent, like really trying to get it done. Some people be like, oh, 
Well, I tried it and it stopped. Like, FBI ain't stopped. They're going to get your ass. <laughs> Whatever they got to do. That's a fact. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you worried about that. Yo, listen, yeah. man. My man, Richard Hitchens. I appreciate Dope you, Dope episode of Cigar Talk. I appreciate you pulling up. And, uh, man, I'm just looking forward to watching the rest of your career unfold, bro. Yeah, thank you for having me, bro. Absolutely, man. You. Yo, we out of here. Blah!